This is section 4.8, part C. We were just looking at trying to make the denominators of our fractions come out evenly when we take a square root or cube root or whatever we're doing. But sometimes, no matter what we do with our fraction, it's not going to work out just by choosing to reduce or not reduce. In that case, we have to use a process called rationalizing the denominator. And essentially, what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by the smallest factor that will cause the radical in the denominator to come out evenly. Again, my whole goal is to make the radical in the denominator come out evenly. I'm going to start by separating. This is the square root of 3 over the square root of 5. And the square root of 5 certainly doesn't come out evenly right now, but I couldn't have reduced it with a 3 anyway, so I'm kind of stuck. What I'll do instead is I'll say, if I multiply that 5 by another 5 to make it a 25, I will be able to take the square root. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5. And of course, I have to multiply by a form of 1, so I don't change the values. So same thing, top and bottom. On the top now, I have the square root of 15. On the bottom, the square root of 25, which, as designed, does come out evenly as a 5 in the denominator. Okay. So always keep that goal in mind. You want the denominator to come out evenly. All right, let's look at number two. This one's already separated for us. Uh, the denominator does not come out evenly, but there wouldn't have been anything I could have reduced under the radical anyway. So, same idea. I'm going to say, what could I multiply by to make that denominator work out perfectly? Now, if you're thinking multiply by another square root of 8, 8 times 8 is 64, yeah, that does come out evenly. But it's to your advantage to always pick the smallest number that will work. That way you don't have more work later on. Simplify. And in this case, I'm going to say, well, if I just multiplied it by 2, I'd have 16, and that works out, right? So let's do that. Let's multiply by the square root of 2, top and bottom. That's going to give me 3 times the square root of 10 over the square root of 16, or 3 times the square root of 10 over 4. Okay. By the way, one of the things we haven't talked about, and maybe we should have on both of these, is reducing a final answer. Because the 15 is in the radical and the 5 is not, it's not okay to say divide both of those by 5. Same thing here. 10 and 4, 10 is inside the radical, 4 is not. I can't reduce. Now the 3 and the 4, if anything could happen there, if I could reduce those, I would do it, because they're both outside radicals. But of course, in this case, 3 fourths is already in lowest terms. OK, we'll look at a few more examples of rationalizing denominators. Here's a cubed root example. And again, I'm going to start by saying I certainly can't reduce that fraction, so let's just separate the numerator and the denominator. I need to make the denominator come out evenly. Let's just remind you here of the list of perfect cubes. What could I turn that 3 into that's a perfect cube, something whose cube root's going to come out evenly? Well, I can't turn the 3 into an 8, but I could turn it into a 27 if I multiplied by 9. So that's what I'm going to choose to do. Multiply by the cube root of 9. I need to do the same thing on top, form of 1.
And so now the top is the cube root of 36, and the bottom is the cube root of 27. The cube root of 36 doesn't come out evenly, so I'm just going to leave that the way it is. But by design, my denominator does come out evenly. It's just 3. And so I've accomplished my goal. No more radicals in the denominator. All right, in number 4, we have a fourth root in our denominator. The numerator is just a whole number, 4. It's not under a radical. So again, notice, can't do any reducing here. That's not in a radical. That is in a radical. I cannot reduce that fraction. Instead, I'm going to look at my fourth powers list. And I'm going to say, what could I turn that 8 into? So it will have a perfect fourth power. And I'm going to find it right away. I could multiply by 2 and make that a 16 which is 2 to the 4th. So let's do it. All right, on the top, the 4 has to stay outside the radical. So I'm just going to write that as 4 times the 4th root of 2. Can't multiply them any more than that. But the bottom is the 4th root of 16 which is 2. Okay. Can we simplify that answer anymore? Can I divide the 2 into the 2 or the 4? Into the 4, right? Those numbers are not inside radicals. I cannot do an inside number and an outside number together. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then that fourth root of 2 stays just the way it is. All right, our last two examples are still going to be simplifying quotients, but with some variables in them. Looking at number 5, I have, uh, let's see, the 7 and the 2x, nothing there that could be reduced under the radicals. So I'm going to start thinking about what could I multiply by right away. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. That's a good thing. And x times x is x squared, which also has a perfect square root. So let's just go ahead with the square root of 2x. Of course, doing the same thing on the top. The 5 stays outside the radical, but I can multiply the numbers under the radical. Square root of 14x. On the bottom, square root of 4x squared, which is really just 2x. You can tell I'm done. I already circled my answer, but notice the 5 and the 2 can't be reduced. 14 is under the radical, so I can't reduce it with the 2. All right, one last example. I have the cube root of 5 over 12x. Nothing can be reduced there, so let's start right out by separating into the cube root of 5 over the cube root of 12x. All right, I need that denominator to come out evenly. So I'm going to once again get out my list of perfect cubes here. And let's see, I'm starting with a 12, and I need to turn it into a perfect cube. So what could I multiply 12 by to make it into one of those numbers? Well, definitely not the 8. Nothing I can multiply by 12 to get 27, or 64, or 125. So maybe the one I need isn't on here yet. Let me see if I can sneak a couple more in here. What's 6 cubed? 216. Does 12 go into 216? Ah, it does, 18 times. So I could do 12 times 18 
and that's going to turn it into that 260. All right, what about the x? If I just multiply by an x, that'll be x squared. That won't come out evenly with the cube root. If I multiply by x squared, though, now I'll have an x cubed, and I'll be able to take that cubed root. And treat the top the same. So I have the cubed root of 5 times 18 is 90 x squared over the cube root of 12 times 18 is 216 x to the third. Numerator does not come out evenly, but that's okay because the denominator does. The cube root of 216 would be that 6, and the cube root of x cubed is just x. Can't reduce because those are under a radical and those aren't. All right, that wraps up section 4.8.